Okay, review and teardown time. Uh, Switch LED light bulb. This is the uh, Switch Infinia. This is uh, the latest bulb from this small startup company. Uh, a couple years ago they produced this bulb here called the Switch 60, um, and it was quite interesting. They spent a lot of effort uh, doing some called liquid cooling. They fill this globe probably with like a mineral oil, um, and that dramatically helps with uh, heat uh, management, which is kind of the number one killer of electronics. Um, Unfortunately, this bulb was just horrendously expensive, about $40, and it had terrible flicker characteristics, so it uh, really wasn't a very competitive bulb. Um, since then, though, they've, uh, they seem to take another shot at it, and they've produced the Infinia line, and it's coming in at a much more reasonable price, around $14, which is um, on the high end of class competitive for a 60-watt equivalency bulb, about 800 lumens. But they still, of course, have this liquid cooling, and uh, that allows them, I guess, to offer the best warranty actually I've been able to find on LED bulbs, which essentially is a lifetime for residential, and then for the commercial applications, three years. So, uh, let's uh, take the bulb apart, um, review it, and uh, see how it differs from its uh, previous series. Okay, let's talk about Flickr. Uh, the setup's very simple. It's a solar cell mounted to a little frame. And I always nominalize the uh, light falling onto the solar cell to be uh, 450 lux. And then uh, I look at my oscilloscope and I look at the peak-to-peak uh, -peak reading to, uh, to give me some sort of sense of how much flicker the bulb produces. Uh, this one's showing about 220 millivolts. Uh, the very first uh, switch bulb, uh, which by far was absolutely the worst I've ever measured, uh, was 1,430. So you can see there's a significant progress on the part of switch. Uh, however, uh, like class leading bulbs like the Philips uh, for, has virtually no but one or two millivolts uh, flicker. They uh, have chosen a very superior uh, chipset from Cirrus which gives a uh, very excellent flicker re uh, results. Um, other bulbs, uh, the, the Cree TW, uh, 188. A Sun Sun, an interesting uh, venture capital backed Chinese company was running about 200. So uh, this bulb is uh, upper high flicker still. Okay, let's talk uh, light distribution patterns. A uh, polar graph here, obviously the bulb, uh, I place in the center. And I use a light meter to record the light intensity on the circle, and that of course can uh, be translated into a, a polar graph. And uh, this is important because actually some LEDs are uh, very poor emulations of uh, incandescent bulbs, and some are quite good. Uh, this one actually falls into the quite good care, uh, category. It's got good side lobes, uh, fires down adequately, and has a nice uh, top. And as a uh, wonderful confirmation, um, one of the few vendors who actually publishes a, a fairly good data sheet, uh, they have a, a plot of the um, light distribution patterns as well. And uh, let's see here, on the top here is actually the, uh, the switch bulb we're looking at today. And then they plot down uh, typical incandescent, uh, obviously trying to show you that indeed this bulb is, is a good uh, emulation of that pattern. So, uh, uh, full marks here for this bulb. Uh, While well, we're looking at the data sheet, um, couldn't help but notice. Um, 80 lumens per watt, which is quite good, uh, but they used the wrong word. Obviously, they spell checked it, but uh, I think they're going for efficiency because this is what uh, Wikipedia thinks this word's all about. Okay, let's uh, carry on. Okay, so here's something else uh, when notes. Uh, this one says that, um, check, check all the patents in the bulb, uh, there's a web address. This is not a surprise, obviously, it's a really active area of uh, the industry and uh, lots of patents being filed. Um, much to my amusement, however, if you were to type this web address in, and then it does a redirect to another page, and it pops up this, which, of course, isn't so useful. So, a little bit of carelessness on Switch's part, since um, if you have something which is meant to be patented, uh, you have to point out which patents it is, and clearly, you're not doing that. Okay, uh, let's talk about bulb weight. Uh, this is the original Switch bulb. It was extremely heavy, and actually caused the sunlight fixtures uh, to tip over. Uh, you can see uh, it comes in about 267 grams. The new switch bulb here is uh, considerably less. It's coming in uh, about 175 grams. That's pretty good. It's still heavier, however, though, than, say, um, an industry-leading bulb. Here's the Philips, uh, 131 grams. So there definitely still is that, that weight penalty that has to be uh, paid for with, uh, I presume, it must be some liquid inside the globe here. Okay, power consumption. Obviously, that's why LED bulbs are becoming popular. Um, a kilowatt meter, which, of course, not measure wattage. 10.6 uh, uh, watts in this meter, 10.5. Uh, data sheet says 10 typical, so coming in a little bit higher. I see sometimes some optimism in uh, wattages on data sheets. Um, I would, of course, run that to 11. Uh, the bulb is, of course, power factor corrected, so uh, that's good. 
Okay, uh, so far we look at the flicker, which is a little bit high. Uh, the light pattern is quite uh, acceptable. Um, the next question really, of course, is to look at the thing which makes this bulb uh, special, which of course is the high service life and the liquid cooling. So the only way to really see if that's uh, got any credibility, of course, is to take the bulb apart. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, uh, obviously the bulb's in two pieces. Uh, interestingly enough, we didn't have to use a hacksaw this time. This is a, another a unique construction. You can see that uh, these two halves uh, are friction fitted together with uh, the power module with its potting compound at the bottom here, of course, and the emitter array and globe on top. Okay, uh, obviously I've uh, sawed the uh, top off. I'll just lift out the emitter array. Um, no surprise, and here appears to be a fluid. It um, certainly is very similar to mineral oil. And here we have the emitter array. And of course the yellow dots are the uh, LEDs. And they've been soldered to a, a flexible substrate. Um, it's basically an aluminum-backed uh, circuit board. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put this in my ultrasonic cleaner and clean it up so uh, it makes inspection a little bit easier. Okay, so here's a close-up of the uh, emitter array. There's... Um, two levels of LEDs and there's eight segments for a total of 24 LEDs and if you look closely at each uh, LED package it looks like there's two LED dies into it so 48 uh, LED uh, in total. Um, the power of course comes through this pin here and then down and it plugs into this array here so a slightly more manufacturable assembly than the previous body torn down. You can see these white uh, solder uh, mask. It, it crazes, unfortunately, as they uh, they fold it around uh, with this uh, fairly irregular shape. That's something that he uh, had problems with. Looks like on the previous assembly. So, other than that, looks like there's a part number, and I think it took yes three revs. So three revs to get this right. So well, that's not so good. Other than that, uh, the actual. Um, it's similar to the other one. This is a, a bladder here. You can actually poke, um, poke a pencil in here. It's like a rubber diaphragm. And uh, I presume that's what's keeping the um, uh, liquid from forming an air bubble in the chamber. So they uh, carry over that concept from the, the previous assembly. Okay, uh, obviously the controller board uh, coming from left to right. AC input in here. Uh, the output to the LED is over here. Uh, this white device obviously a fuse, a, a full wave ridge rectifier. This is the uh, controller I see. Another NXP, the SSL21082T. You can see the data sheet there is a uh, very modern uh, October 3 for Rev6. Uh, NXP is definitely winning a lot of business in the uh, LED business. If I flip it over, uh, I do see actually a electrolytic capacitor. This is probably the highest failure item in uh, these bulb designs. Uh, it looks like though to achieve lower flicker, even switches had to move to one. Uh, now to their credit, they've actually chosen a 125 degree rated uh, capacitor rather than the 115 that one's typically seeing. So that's good. Um, not much more to see here. They haven't put any of this uh, UL numbering on the, the board, but uh, you can see it looks like it is made by switch and it's, they took uh, four shots out of it to get it right. Um, the only other thing you can say is that uh, this design is um, there's definitely a thermal break between the uh, LED and the uh, power supply module, uh, rather than uh, rather than being tightly coupled. Looks like they're fairly loose. There's obviously a fair bit of air gap between this uh, plastic piece and then the actual circuit board itself. I suspect that's on purpose to uh, to achieve a good thermal break. Um, you can see I've taken the emitter ray off as well. This is the uh, little bladder that. Uh, uh, pushes the uh, fluid around so that you don't get an air bubble in it. You can see the emitter ray comes back on. This is actually much cheaper if you look at the previous teardown. This was all done with metal and machine screws and all sorts of expense that uh, would be, uh, well, is highly inappropriate for a high volume manufactured product. So it looks like they've cleaned that up. Other than that, not much to say uh, on the circuit board. It's a, a reasonably um, standard topology uh, that uh, is uh, in use for these bulb bulbs. All right, well, there we have it, uh, the Switch Infinia. Uh, clearly, they've got the liquid cooling going around the LEDs so that does give some credence that this port of the uh, design will uh, have a much longer service life than some of its competitors. Uh, they've had to resort to an electrolytic on their power supply. I think that'll be one of the weak uh, points on the design. Uh, even though they've thermally broke it, uh, if it does get too hot, of course, uh, it will not have that 
25,000 hour service life that uh, is desired. Uh, and of course to have an unlimited residential warranty 